So here is our ukwaju juice, tamarind served over ice. Our pasta is ready and it's looking delish. Hey guys, so um, I came to surprise my sister Trudy and I'm actually at outside her door just outside her door she doesn't know I'm here so I just wanted to come make her feel better because she's been unwell and I missed her so much so I'm here she's not around I've tried calling I was knocking at the door but um, she wasn't opening so I decided to call her but apparently she's not in the house so I'll just get in and make her something so let's go so I'm inside and uh, yeah so let me just put my bags and make her something so for the longest time i've been wanting to to make for her some ukwaju she loves she loves ukwaju juice very much so i was like today is that day i'm going to be surprising her with some ukwaju so so i carried some here i don't know if she has any in her fridge but I have some, let me show you. So this is some cardamom or iliki. It's it's such a powerful spice to put in your ukwaju or tamarind juice. It usually brings out the flavor very, very much. So this is a must. Whenever you're making tamarind juice, be sure to put some cardamom. Then this vimto flavor this is also another very unique flavor to put in your ukwaju juice it really makes it pop with flavor so then the last thing is definitely ukwaju so this is the tamarind itself uh raw tamarind it hasn't been cooked it's in its purest form so to make tamarind juice you take your tamarind and soak it up in water so soaking in water will take quite a while about an hour for it to at least uh, loosen up and then you'll get the juice from there so I don't have an hour what I'll do is just boil it up I'll just put some water in a pot put this inside then boil it up until it has loosened up like all the tamarind flesh has loosened up and then i sieve that and continue the process so let's make it let's guys make don't it. worry about my kilemba i'm having a bad hair day so that's why i'm all wrapped up but still i'm representing africa you know africa to the world <laughs> but yes that's my outfit of the day it's night i've had a hectic day but yep here we are <laughs> So my phone went off, uh, but I went ahead and added water in my pot and added my tamarind or ukwaju. So it's boiling. I just want it to release all the flesh and then I'll sieve it from here and continue the process. So, even as I prepare the ukwaju juice for Trudy, definitely I had to make dinner for her. And uh, this is some beef, minced, some minced beef that I want to make uh, 
I want to use to make some pasta. Some creamy pasta, some creamy cheesy pasta. So I layer it with this minced beef. So our tamarind juice has uh, boiled quite well. So I'll just remove it, let it cool for a bit. Sieve and put some sugar. So to make the creamy pasta, we are making the roux first. So this is butter, some garlic, and some flour, some wheat flour. So you just want to cook that up until it starts to turn brown. And then we add some milk. So this will ensure we have a creamy pasta base. So whenever you have, uh, you want some creamy pasta and you don't have some cream, this is your to-go recipe. So we are adding milk to this. It will thicken up because of the flour. The flour will make this thick. The butter will give this a creamier taste and our pasta will be thick. So you can see it's starting to thicken up. So you add milk as you go until you get the perfect consistency of your sauce because we are making we are basically making a sauce. It's it's called a roux or a bechamel sauce. So you just want to stir that up just to ensure that you don't have any lumps in this. You can see it's starting to thicken up and uh, our sauce is actually almost ready. So remember some butter, some garlic. The garlic is uh, completely optional. Then when the butter is melted, you add in some flour. That's about two to three tablespoons of flour, all-purpose flour. And then when it starts to turn brown, you add in your milk bit by bit until you get the perfect consistency of your sauce. So our bechamel sauce is ready. We'll add some mozzarella, just a little bit of this to bring in the cheesiness in our pasta. So just mix that up to combine. So we have our cooked pasta here. We'll just add to our bechamel like that. Top this up, we'll add our minced beef. Pasta eco ready. Are you going to have that as you wait for chapos, Sama? Huh? I serve you. So, so pasta is ready and it's looking delish. So let's serve.
go. Welcome. So after saving the okwaju, this is what uh, we have to use, and this is the residue. So for you to know where, like, um, you have sieved enough, you need to taste these things. You need to taste this just to make sure they're no longer sour. When you taste and they're bland, like they don't have any taste, um, you don't get any taste from them. That's when you know you have extracted all the ukwaju and now you can throw away this and just use this. So to this you're going to add sugar, about a cup of sugar because this is around 2 liters, 2 liters of ukwaju juice. So we're going to add about a cup of sugar. So this is our cardamom. We want to crush it into a fine powder just to be able to absorb, like the juice will be able to absorb the powder more powerful than when it's whole. So we just want to crush it into a powder and put it in our juice so that they can boil together and absorb all those flavors. So once you've removed the husks, here are the husks. So you just pulse it at first. If you want to do this process, you don't go full on. You just pulse it so that the husks can separate from the seeds. And then now you can blend this up to a fine powder. So this husk, uh, you should not uh, throw them away, you can use them to make tea. So when you're just making tea, you just dump them in your tea and your tea will be a bit flavorful because there are some cardamoms like you can see here. So, so at this point you don't want to cook the ukwaju juice, you, we just want to melt the sugar. So that's why we put on the fire, but now the sugar is all melted. So we'll just switch off the fire and add our flavoring. So our juice, our kwaju juice or tamarind juice is ready. So we are just going to leave this to cool down because it's hot. As you can see, it's very hot. But um, I just want to serve some here and put it in the freezer just to fasten the process of cooling so that you can have some
And juice, kwaju, with chapo. Okay. So these are the meals that we serve today for my sister and yeah this is pasta that's chapati this is some meatball stew and some kachumari so here is our ukwaju juice tamarind served over ice just to make it cold and all chilled but yeah, that's how simple it is to make some ukwaju or tamarind juice. I hope you guys will make this. It's so simple. You can buy tamarind from anywhere um, along the streets, in the supermarkets, and then make it for yourself. So we're just going to be enjoying this meal with our drink here. As you guys just salivate and wish it was you. So that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do not forget to leave a like on the video. Share it with as many people as you can. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.